Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about how to make a Galaxy Z Fold 7 a bit more pixel-like. So a lot of these changes are just personal preference, but I came from a pixel phone, so these are the changes that I made to make it more comfortable for my use. So let's get the basic stuff out of the way. The first thing I changed was obviously the notification panel and the quick toggles separation. So for some reason, Samsung went full Apple and they made the right side open the quick toggles and the left side open the notifications. So what you do is you go here, tap the pen icon, panel settings, and then put them back together. Now you can access everything with just the single swipe down twice and you can get to everything instead of having to reach up to the top corners of the phone. So the next basic thing to do is obviously to switch the keyboard to the Gboard. Uh, everyone knows how to do that, I'm not gonna go through that, but there is one setting that you have to change yourself, which is the spell check, the spell correction here. So you go to settings, general management, and then down here, this spelling correction, make sure you switch this to the Gboard spell checker as well. So back to the topic of notifications. So by default, Samsung have set the notification pop-ups to brief, so it should look like this when you get a notification. So it's a little toast that appears in the top section of the screen there. It's not very pixel-like. To change it back to how it was on the pixel, we have to head to the settings and go to notifications, pop-up style, and switch it back to detailed. So once you've done that, this is what the notifications would look like. It has the options on the bottom where you can mark as red and reply straight away, and that's how it was on the Pixel. So again, on notifications, by default, Samsung put the notification icons on the lock screen in the top left corner of the screen there. I find it a bit hard to read, and on the Pixel, they appeared on the middle of the screen, so you could tell straight away that there was a notification waiting for you. So to get something similar to that, again, we head to the settings, and we have to head to notifications, and then lock screen. So here you want to choose cards. Once you've chosen cards, the notifications will now appear below the clock near the center of the screen. So if we close the phone, that's how it looks. So on the topic of notifications, uh, for some reason, Samsung have disabled notification categories by default. So what you can do is you go to settings, notification, and then go down to advanced settings. And there is a toggle down here, manage notification categories for each app. So this is off by default, you just have to enable that. After you've enabled that, you have access to all the notification categories that were available on the Pixel phone. So as an example, let's say the Tesla app here, we can go in here and then look at the notifications and then manage the notification categories by themselves. So the Tesla has two kinds of notifications that it can give you, the phone key status, which I've disabled, I'll enable it for you, and then the notifications. So inside each category, you can go in and set whether the this notification category will be an alert or a silent one, whether it's minimized, whether or not the content will show on the lock screen or not. So it gives you more fine grain control. Um, whereas before this whole section was just disabled. So you couldn't actually modify these. It was everything or nothing. Next, you wanna make sure that your password manager is set to the Google one. So you wanna to go to settings, security and privacy, and then go to more security settings. And then down here, there is passwords, pass keys and autofill and you want to make sure that Google is set as your preferred service. Otherwise, you might be saving your passwords to the Samsung Pass, which you may like, but if you came from a Pixel, then all your passwords are probably saved with the Google one. Another thing you might want to do is install the Google Contacts app. Now, this, the phone itself comes with the Samsung Contacts app, which is fine. You can sync to the Google account with it, but it also syncs to the Samsung account, so it's kind of duplicating some of the stuff. So personally, I just want to have it all in one place, so I installed the Google Contacts app. This is optional. You can also install the Google Phone app as well. So personally, I do like this one a bit more because when you're on the dialer screen here, you have your contacts here ready for you to call, whereas on the Samsung one, it just presents you with a giant dial pad, which I find less useful. So this is the Samsung one. As you can see, it's just got a dial pad at the bottom and there's nothing much at the top. Uh, it does do the T9, which the other one does as well. But yeah, I feel like it's easier to just open this and just tap the contact I want to call. So the Samsung dialer isn't all that bad. I just didn't like the layout. Uh, it does have the caller ID and spam protection, which is pretty cool. Uh, and if you do switch away from it, you do lose some of the Galaxy AI stuff, which is like the live translate and the text in call, where you can basically you know type text and then it will speak to the other person on your behalf. So next, let's talk about unlocking the phone. So 
the fingerprint scanner is on the power button here and I found that on the Samsung phone, at least by default, the fingerprint scanner wasn't always on. So to change that, we have to go to settings, security and privacy, and then scroll down to screen lock and biometrics. And now you can see that we have the fingerprint option down here. So we open fingerprints and you see the fingerprint setting here, fingerprint always on. By default, it's set to off. So I've changed it to always on for both the cover and the main screen. What does that mean? It means that when the phone is locked, you can just place your finger over the scanner and then it will unlock the phone immediately. Uh, previously, when it was set to off, you had to press the button, physically push the button down, wake the screen up before the fingerprint scanner is active. So changing it to always on is closer to how it was on the Pixel. So let's talk about unlocking the phone and making payments. So let's unlock it now. I'm gonna use face unlock. All right, so the phone has unlocked using my face. Now, normally on the Pixel, as long as you've unlocked the phone, whether it's with the face or with the fingerprint, it's ready to make payments. So as long as you're on the screen, you can tap your phone and then it'll work. Uh, unfortunately on the Samsung, the face unlock is not considered secure enough to make payments. So what would happen in this case is if I tap the phone to the payment terminal, a little pop-up will show up asking me to use my fingerprint. Uh, I can't show you this now, but I can demonstrate what it looks like by opening up the wallet app. So this is kind of what it would look like if you tapped your phone to the payment screen, it'll ask for a fingerprint. Um, so this is kind of annoying because sometimes when you pull the phone out of your pocket um, and you're gonna make a payment, you don't know if it unlocked using your face or using the fingerprint because there's no real distinction between the two. It just shows the home screen and then you think it's unlocked and then you go to pay and then, oh, you gotta use the fingerprint, which is very annoying. So there's no real workaround, but I found a way to make it a bit easier to distinguish between unlocking with a fingerprint versus unlocking with a face unlock. So let's dive into this. So this is getting a little bit technical now. What you need to do is you need to go to settings, go to the modes and routine, and then you wanna to go to routines, and then you wanna set up a bunch of routines here. So as you can see here, I already have four routines set up for unlocking the phone. So let's open one of them and talk about what I set up. So I have four fingerprints set up on this phone because you know, different ways I hold the phone. So you have to do this for each fingerprint that you've set up. What you wanna do is you set up a routine and you wanna make it vibrate when you unlock the phone with that particular fingerprint. So I've made it so that, you know, when you unlock with say fingerprint number one, it will vibrate once. You can pick what vibration pattern you want. Um, I found the short one was the easiest to distinguish. Um, so I chose that. So now every time you unlock the phone with your fingerprint, it will make that short vibration so that you know that, okay, I've unlocked the phone with the fingerprint, I can make a payment. Versus if it unlocked with the face, it wouldn't have the vibration. And then you would know, okay, it didn't pick up my fingerprint. It used my face. I'll have to you know, use the fingerprint before I can make the payment. So you're gonna do that for each fingerprint that you have set up here. Since I'm on the Bixby routine screen here, uh, I have one more routine here set up, which is called cover screen portrait view. So let's talk about that now. So on the Pixel 9 Pro Fold, the screen rotate or the auto rotate setting was independent for the cover screen and the main screen. Uh, on the Fold 7, it's not the case. So if you have auto rotate enabled, it's enabled across the front screen and the, the main screen, which is a little bit annoying because sometimes you don't want you know, the home screen to auto rotate when you're on the, the outer display and you might want that auto rotation when you have the phone open on the main display. So one way around this is to have this routine here. Um, basically, it just detects when the screen is closed and when it is, it will lock the screen rotation to portrait so that it won't do auto rotate. Um, but the good thing is even if you do have it locked, so let's say we lock it here, there we go. So let's say we did lock it here. And then if we rotate it, you, we should get a little icon down here, which you can tap and then you can manually rotate it the other way. So it's still pretty easy to flip between the, the two. So since we're getting technical now, let's talk about screenshots and screen recordings. So on the Fold 7, when I first got it, I found that all my screenshots were being backed up by Google Photos by default. And it turns out that Samsung have put the screenshots folder into the DCIM folder on the phone. And that makes Google Photos think that every file inside that is a photo that is taken by the camera. So normally cameras save things in the DCIM folder. So to work around that, what you need to do is you need to go to the settings and then go to advanced features and there should be screenshots and screen recordings. So you head into here and here you can set the default location where the screenshots are saved. 
Now I've already changed this. I changed it to internal storage slash pictures slash screenshots. Um, that's where it was on the pixel. Um, by default on the Fold 7, it was internal storage slash DCIM slash screenshots. So after you've changed it to pictures, the Google Photos shouldn't automatically back up your screenshots anymore. You have the option, but at least it's not forced on you. So similarly for the video recording down here, uh, I've changed this to internal storage slash movies. Um, that's the default location on the Pixel. Um, by default on the Fold 7, it was internal storage slash DCIM slash screen recordings. Uh, and I just changed it to slash movies. Next, let's talk about folders. So on the home screen, I have some folders here. So by default, when you open a folder, it expands to full screen on the Fold 7, which looks really nice, but it makes it a little bit hard to actually reach the items. So on the Pixel, uh, when you open the folder, the icons would expand to just above where the folder icon was. It makes it easy for your thumb to quickly reach the icons inside the folder after it's expanded. But here, not the case. You tap on it and it's all the way over here and it's quite difficult to reach over, especially when the folder is quite empty anyway. So one workaround is to use Good Lock and then Home Up. And inside Home Up, there is an option under Home Screen to change the folders to be pop-up folders. So if we enable this and then go back home, now if we tap on the icon, the folder icon, it expands to roughly where the icon previously was like this. Still not ideal, it's expanding to exactly where my thumb is. Normally on the pixel, it would expand to just above here so that you can quickly reach over and then tap the icons. Here, yeah, not perfect, but much better than how it was before. All right, so since we are talking about good luck and home up and all the customization stuff, let's talk about the task switcher. So by default, when you bring up the task switcher on the Samsung, it jumps to the next app. It doesn't show you the current one. So normally I like to see the current one first because I typically go to this page because I want to go to split screen or multi-window mode and I do that by tapping the icon up here. I know there are gestures that you can enable like two finger swipe to jump into split screen mode straight away. Um, but my muscle memory is telling me to tap this icon. So to get around this and make sure that the first app that shows up when you bring up the task switcher is to go to good lock, home up, and then task switcher here. So here you can choose to center the current running app. So after you've done that, when you bring up the task switcher, it shows you the current app straight away. So now you can do the whole split screen stuff directly from here. And just for context, that was how it was on the Pixel as well. So as you can see, as soon as you bring up the task switcher, this is the first app that shows up, the current app you're looking at. And I think one of the reasons why they had it like this on the Pixel was that you can actually long press and then select any text straight from here. Unfortunately, that is not an option here on the Fold 7, um, but let's talk about selecting text. So because we can't select text on the app switcher anymore, uh, I found two potential alternatives that can do it. The first one is to invoke circle to search. So hold the, the bar at the bottom and then you should be able to circle, let's say, you know, this text here and then you can select text and then copy it this way. I still find bring up the task switcher and then long pressing a bit easier, um, but that is one alternative. The other alternative is to, let me get rid of this, is to use the AI select that Samsung has which is very similar to circle to search. Uh, and then you can just, you know, circle around that and then you can select, copy it. You can do translate, all that kind of stuff. So these two are very similar and they're, they're workarounds to the whole, you know, text selection thing. All right, and the last thing I have for making your phone a bit more pixel-like uh, is addressing this icon up here, this vibrate icon up here. So on the Pixel phones, they actually got rid of it because they realized that people have their phones on silent practically all the time. And it's kind of a waste of space to have a little icon up here. Uh, and Samsung have just left the icon there and it's fine. You know, when Pixel got rid of it, people were up in arms saying, oh, how do I know if my phone's on vibrate? And now that we got used to it, um, I, I can understand why it's kind of a waste of space. But anyway, depending on which camp you're in, you can keep this icon here or you can remove it uh, using good lock and then quick star so if we enable quick star you can choose how the icons show up or what icons show up so if you don't want this icon here you can get rid of it and now it's gone all right so that's all my tips for the fold 7 to make it a bit more pixel like i uh, hope this is useful and thanks for watching